Hey guys, thanks for joining. So in this video, I'll be talking about AI and this will be the first video where I do that. And there's a good reason for that. Bit by Bit is a coding platform, right? For making parametric 3D applications. But all of the AI models out there, you know, they weren't really picking up uh, bit by bits, documentation pages. It's um, yeah, a younger project and maybe not as popular as other frameworks. So yeah, that was a bit of a reason why I never really showed you guys uh, what you can do with the AI. And Grok is the first AI system, uh, the latest release, um, actually probably parsed information about bit by bit and now can give a good advice actually on how to use the platform, how to code even in TypeScript. Uh, so we will look today in some of the examples that uh, Grok can provide to you. Um, this is really beneficial to our users, I think, because yeah, then, you know, uh, you get a good personal assistant. Um, actually, it's better than probably any person that I could hire, right? Um, in the sense that, um, well, it's really hard to learn such a technology that is really big, right? So we have quite a, like, we have three CAD kernels that we sort of expose through bit by bit and understanding the details of those, it requires a lot of, uh, yeah, knowledge. And basically building that up is quite hard for humans, right? And Grok or, or other AI systems are more capable of doing that. And also it's interesting that this was my plan all along, right? Uh, I wasn't really uh, big enough to invest into making my own uh, AI models. Uh, training them is really expensive. And I was just thinking, you know, I'll just make bit by bit as open as possible. Uh, I'll make all the scripts available online. I'll make open source parts of the code base also available on GitHub. And my plan was, yeah, one day, you know, those models will pick it up, uh, will parse it and, and will incorporate that into the vast amount of global knowledge, right? This is much more powerful, I think, than what you would get if you would just train the model uh, specifically on one technology. Yeah, so I've been talking for way too long, I think, and it's time that we look into some demos. I will just, you know, from the user's perspective, I will say, hey, how could I use bit by bit dev and leverage it in my work? So this is a generic question, right? So probably the answer will also be quite general. Um, yeah, so it picks up some information that it's web-based. Um, I'm not gonna read everything, right? Uh, this is really a lot of information, but uh, the platform's editors read for visual scripting, Blockly for block-based coding, or Monaco for TypeScript, let you define relationships between design elements. Yeah, so this is all true. Uh, we have here those three editors also on the home screen, right? Read, Blockly, Monaco. So um, yeah, it just picks up this information. It knows that yeah, you can do things like export step files for 3D printing or further editing in tools like Rhino or Fusion 360. So I don't think I mentioned Fusion 360 anywhere on my website. Um, maybe Rhino. Yeah, that could be. But yeah, this is something that Grok sort of parsed together. It knows that step files are industry standard files, right? So it knows that, yeah, we will be able to use those also in this uh, application. Um, yeah, it also knows that we support two game engines, so Babylon.js and 3.js. So this is also very, very fundamental for bit by bit. And if you're new to you know, our platform, probably this is a very good answer. You will sort of learn better of what it can do. Um, so yeah, and CNC milling, engineering, yeah, like milling itself maybe is not particularly the main thing of the platform, but yeah, uh, why not? You know, so could be used for that. Uh, hobbyists, educators, definitely why not uh, to get started ahead to an explore getting started section, play with read editor first. So it knows which editor is the most simple or intuitive, right? Um, it's also good for professionals, but yeah. If you're starting out, you know, Read is really the one to pick. And yeah, we also have TypeScript editor, etc. And Docs bit by bit dev, yeah, they do provide documentation. So it's here. You know, you can go there and you see the docs. So everything is documented. Um, yeah, this is really helpful, I think. Okay, so now let's ask 
grok to do something else and i have the query prepared here uh so hey how, could you provide an example for typescript code on bit by bit dev monaco editor that creates ost sphere and a cube and draws those entities yeah for now let's see how it handles this situation so now it goes and it says okay start yeah this looks quite okay yeah, this is actually really well done. So let's let's try and start it. So I'll just copy paste this to our Monaco editor. And you see that IntelliSense at least doesn't show any errors. And yeah, it picked up some colors. Yeah, it's interesting what is going to happen. Ah, okay. So <laughs> this is fun actually. Okay, I'll make myself a little smaller here. I'm not that important in this situation. So what it did, it did create the box and the sphere. I didn't really tell them that they need to be somehow separated in different coordinate systems or whatever. So it generated both of them. And to make them both visible, it decided that it needs to make the faces opaque, right? So it used this face opacity property to make them both on 0 0.8. And this way they are both visible. <laughs> so this is really unexpected and i didn't really use a think mode i think yeah this is just general uh, you know question um for a standard model and i must say like it's not always very stable but in this case when i provide more context to it it does a good job and yeah it, it did surprise me in the sense that yeah it used good details uh, it used draw any async function. Sometimes it just hallucinates draw solid or whatever. Uh, so that also probably uh, is a bit of a thing. But yeah, I mean, whenever you copy paste the script to bit by bit, you will see, you know, IntelliSense errors. So if something is wrong, like, yeah, it will just be red. So um, uh, so it's sometimes easy to spot the errors and when you don't get a good answer probably try to play with a query <laughs> that's the answer you know so you have to provide it some context some details and yeah again this is looking pretty great uh, i will just see how far i can bring this so could you make the edges of the cube rounded with zero point no with let's say the cube option size is eight so with radius of one could you make the edges of the cube rounded with the radius of one yeah i'm not sure if my english is really good but let's see if it does that good okay operations fillet so okay so this is good code but probably there will be some things in here that we need to fix yeah Okay, so this is interesting. So fillet options, fillet DTO. So this is something that it picked up really well. Uh, here is the problem. So we have fillet, not in the operations, but fillets. So like this. And we need to do fillet edges. And now what is complaining? Yeah, okay. So this is something, I get it, sort of generics. So bit dot input dot ost dot yeah this is something that i don't expect rock to really grasp immediately but yeah now this is okay and let's try to run the code okay yeah so you know okay this is now working and of course it did not really get uh, this completely right but again um, it sort of understood the principle and how to do that it even picked up the good dto to use so yeah this is all quite impressive i must say and okay let's try to say that it needed to be this right and so the fillet options had to be created like this and rounded cube like this. Uh, could you also 
move the cube upwards by 16 units. Okay, and you know what? Let's try to use this think mode. Uh, let's hit run. So he, this is magical, right? It's now thinking, discussing the concepts with itself. It's always quite magical. And yeah, it will just take its time, I think, to take everything into account. I think I already saw that it used Z axis for upwards. So this is probably gonna be a bit wrong. If maybe it will figure that out in his thinking. Let's see. Okay, yeah, it just goes and goes and okay, okay. So let's see. Okay, yeah, so it goes and translates everything. Let's see if it fixed this mistake. Fill a DTO. Yeah, this is nice. Fill it edges. This is correct. Transform strength. Okay, let, let's let's see. Now I'm really interested. <laughs> so let's go. Let's start. Copy. Paste. Okay, so what's wrong here? It just used vector instead of translation. This is something that yeah, anyone can mistake. And uh, yeah, here, you know, okay, this is small detail, base 0.3. This is just a better typing, which will allow this code to run. So this is very interesting that it just mixed up the axis. So it moved the cube towards Z direction. And this is standard in CAD software as well, right? So upwards sometimes means Y direction, sometimes Z direction. And in this case, you just mess it up like this. So let's just do it like this. Let's say 16 here, zero there, let's hit run. And now indeed the cube is moved upwards. Okay, so all of that was pretty impressive. Uh, I like the decision that Grok took to make the model opaque, right? So that the cube and the sphere are visible. It made few mistakes that are really easy to make. And also actually, like even with this one, you know, the code would actually work. Like you get this error here, but it does work. Uh, it's not like critical error or anything. It's more like making TypeScript happy. In this situation, it misunderstood the property name so translation instead of vector this is also you know maybe a bad decision on api design you could say um, also this type information is not really necessary in in the sense that you can run this code and it will work actually right so it's just typescript that sort of complains about the type safety and things like that so it's yeah uh, pretty impressive it's really interesting. I will be playing with it more. And for this demo part, this is it. Uh, in this video, I just wanted to keep the remaining uh, time to discuss, you know, the blog post I wrote uh, a few years ago called Golden Age for Open Source CAD and AI. Um, yeah, don't laugh. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I, two years ago, I sort of had this idea, of course, of making bit by bit as open as possible. I mentioned that in the beginning of the video. And I had here this, yeah, uh, quote that I just want to read to you. So AI systems learn by utilizing publicly accessible libraries, which presents a challenge for large corporations that prefer closed access, right? So while open access allows AI to gain an in-depth understanding of various code bases, including custom industry patterns, limitations, and capabilities of algorithms, closed access impedes these processes. So this means that in the near future, AI systems will provide better advice and recommendations for open source products compared to closed ones. And I'm not exactly sure, you know, uh, that this is completely correct, but in the sense of the strategy for me personally, that worked out uh, really well, I think. You see that now Grok can advise our users as well on how to use the platform, how to code 3D applications. And of course, what helps is that we have these public projects available to everyone. You know, you can find them here under project slash public. You can go into any project, open its details, look into the read code. In this case, it's JSON, right? Um, in TypeScript uh, cases, then it will be a TypeScript. And this helps also those models to learn, to understand how those projects are being made. And of course, we have a GitHub repo uh, with the mono 
repo for all npm packages here so basically this code base allows also those models to grow to understand to reason about bit by bit and you see here that we have JSCAD, Manifold, OST, all the CAD kernels, uh, also Babel and JS and 3GS versions of the uh, core uh, exposed to our users. So this allows the models to reason better about the bit by bit. And I hope that, uh, yeah, more models will pick it up. Uh, and the ones that already picked it up will become better and better in understanding how uh, to advise our users in building applications. So I'm quite positive about the future of AI and yeah, let's see how that works out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope this was helpful. Uh, and yeah, if you liked it, please uh, hit like. And if you really liked it, you know, just subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel and let's see each other in the next videos. Cheers.